This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. So uh, the goals of uh, the talk is going to be to review the evidence that we have right now in terms of how depression can impact patients with cardiovascular disease in general. Then we're going to talk more about how depression can impact peripheral arterial disease and discuss some of the, uh, the studies that we've done at the VA uh, over the last two years and then like, uh, try to see if we, there's anything that we can do about it. For the first topic, uh, the one-year prevalence of uh, a major depressive episode in the U.S. is 7%. The lifetime uh, risk is 16%, so this affects a fair amount of the population. Once depression is there, there's a double risk of developing uh, cardiovascular disease in otherwise healthy individuals. After uh, an acute coronary syndrome, there's about 20% of the patients that will suffer from depression, making depression three times more likely to happen after a coronary event. What does this uh, lead to? Uh, well, a change in the mortality of the patient, basically. Here you can see the six month, uh, six months outcomes in patients uh, after an MI. This is data from McGill University. Uh, with uh, Fraser Smith, but basically depression is associated with at least a double in the risk of cardiac events one to two years after a uh, myocardial infarction, even adjusting uh, after adjusting for the severity of the infarct and other cardiovascular risk factors. So it's believed to be a dose response relationship. The more uh, severe the depression, the earlier and the more severe the cardiac events after. What would be mechanisms for that? It's believed that the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis is involved uh, with a dysfunction, basically in upregulation. There's a reduced heart rate variability, basically with a shift towards a more sympathetic like system. This leads to a change in the platelet activation, an increase in the platelet activation, an increase in the inflammatory markers, and we keep talking about inflammation in PED, so this would likely be involved an impair in the vascular, uh, impairment in the vascular function, lower level of omega-3 fatty acids, and I'll talk tomorrow about uh, the importance of omega-3 fatty acids in the diet, and then like basically changes or like worse lifestyle behaviors, more likely to be smoking, less likely to take their medications, poorer diet, uh, social isolation, and chronic life stress. So overall, you have like very present, like very objective biological factors that are present and then behavioral factors, but uh, depression reduces the chance of being able to successfully modify other cardiac risk factors. Now, so does uh, depression ne negatively impact patients with coronary artery disease? Yes. What about PED now? So uh, there is uh, the atherosclerotic uh, risk in community studies demonstrated there's an increased risk of incident PD among patients that are depressed. So following the coronary literature, there's also an increased risk of developing PD in patients that have depression. Who's more likely to suffer from it? young women, as is uh, uh, depression more common in uh, young women. And a lot of the, uh, uh, the evidence comes actually from uh, Kim Smolderen in the Netherlands. She's uh, following prospectively patients uh, in vascular surgery uh, outpatient clinics, and basically like uh, this is what they found. There's also, like uh, in their court, they, they saw a, reduce, uh, a reduction in maximal walking distance among the patients that were depressed. If you look at the six minute walking test, and this is data from McDermott, Mary McDermott, so this is worse among patients who are depressed. 
What else happens? There's a poor performance ac across different domains in terms of symptoms, like treatment satisfaction, quality of life, social functioning. So all of those basically like have a, a worse performance. There's a greater annual decline in the functional uh, performance of the patients with PED over time who are depressed. There's less functional improvement after endovascular procedures, and that's I think is very important to realize, particularly we're trying to improve the outcomes after revascularization or endovascular procedures, while patients who are depressed have like worse outcomes. Uh, there's an increased failure of revascularization in terms of primary failure, primary assisted, secondary, uh, an increased uh, recurrence of symptoms. This is uh, data from SHARE, uh, from uh, Journal of Vascular Surgery in patients both undergoing like bypass or so open surgery and endovascular procedures. Uh, there's an increased progression of the contralateral uh, leg peripheral arterial disease in patients undergoing lower extremity revascularization. There's more cardiovascular events and death after revascularization in those patients that are depressed. So overall, like there's, you could see that there's a lot of evidence that depression can negatively impact patients with PED. So how did it come about like that we became interested in that? Well, at the VA, we have a lot of veterans. A lot of our patients have PTSD or depression. Their disease burden is very elevated. So we asked the question in our patient population here at the VA, does it make a difference? So um, again, like in terms of like uh, the background for that, like PED, CD, very similar biological factors. So uh, we ask, like, is there a risk? Uh, is depression a risk factor for PED? But also, what are the mechanism involved in that association? And is there something that we could act upon? So we looked at the heart and soul court uh, to try to answer that question. Uh, the heart and soul is the PI is Mary Woolley at the VA. Uh, it's a thousand patients that were recruited from hospital in San Francisco uh, and mostly at the VA between 2000 and 2002. They were followed prospectively for seven years. The goal of the court was to determine like how uh, a psychological disorder can impact patients with coronary artery disease. But the uh, prospectively like uh, uh, educated events related to cardiovascular disease and peripheral arterial disease. So in terms of uh, what we looked at, our predictor was depressive symptoms or outcome was prevalent PED. So on, on entering the study, did they have PED? And then did they develop PED during the follow-up? And then uh, the covariates that we were interested in included like uh, their comorbid conditions, like medications, uh, different PD risk factor, inflammation, because this data was present, and different health behaviors. So in terms of what characterized the patients that were depressed versus non-depressed, the patients that were depressed were younger. They were more likely to be women. Uh, the patients uh, that were depressed also had the more, uh, more comorbidities in terms of a history of myocardial infarction, CHF, diabetes. They're, they had a worse cholesterol, like increased triglyceride. They had worse inflammation, more likely to be smokers, to be less likely to be physically active, less likely to take their medication, and more likely to, have a, uh, to be more obese. We did a mediation analysis to try to figure out what was of these factors, what were the most important that could mediate or explain this association between depression and PED. So race was very important, CHF, diabetes, uh, HDL, the, the triglycerides, the biomarkers in terms of inflammation, smoking, and physical inactivity. So when we looked at the association between prevalent PED and depression, so we're on entering the study, so 12% uh, of uh, who were depressed had PED versus 7%. So that was an odds ratio of 1.8. We adjusted for different factors or in the mediation analysis and found at the end that we lost significance, meaning that those factors were explaining inflammation, like the health behaviors were explaining this association between PED and uh, depression. When the patients were uh, prospectively followed, over time, the ones who were depressed were more likely to develop PED and the ones that didn't have PED at baseline. 
And then again, we did like an analysis and a, there was a double in the risk of uh, uh, having like P, uh, PED if you're depressed, like uh, down the line. And then those uh, were explained once again by the different factors in terms of inflammation and health behaviors. So we concluded that depressive symptoms are associated with PED. Uh, that the association is explained by often modifiable risk factors in terms of smoking and physical uh, inactivity, but inflammation is very important in this. The direction of the association needs to be further explored. Which one comes first? Is it because that you're depressed that you get uh, PED, or do you get like depressed because you have a PED? And it's interesting that uh, Dr. Uh, Smolderen, like um, uh, in the Netherlands, I was saying that she, uh, they've done a lot of the the work. They then interviewed those patients, like that come into their clinic, and a lot of those patients have a family history of depression or have been uh, suffering from depression at the beginning. So depression is probably very much involved like as a risk factor like for those patients and not just I cannot walk then therefore I get depressed. Um, so need for so we need to have a, a keep a high index of suspicion for the depression uh, for depression the setting of PED. So is there anything that we could do about it uh, uh, in our patient population? The American Heart Association in 2008 uh, came out with an advisory for depression and coronary artery disease. A lot of the patients who have like uh, uh, PED also have concomitant uh, cardiovascular or coronary heart uh, disease. So I think that's the closest evidence that we have at this point in time for this. So what do they advise? Well, they say that the need to screen is imperative and you should start with a PHQ2 and then if that's positive, go for a PHQ9, so a patient health questionnaire. What, does, uh, what is this? Some of the questions that you may ask, so for the PHQ2, so over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by the following? Little interest or pleasure in doing things or feeling down, depressed, or hopeless. So a score of three or higher has a good sensitivity and specificity for major depressive disorder. The PHQ-9 is a little bit more elaborated, and this is the one that we've been using in our uh, uh, studies actually at the, at the VA. So again, the first two questions are the ones from the PHQ-2, but then it asks about like problems with sleeping, feeling tired, poor appetite, feeling bad about oneself, trouble concentrating, moving or speaking slowly, or suicidal thoughts. What if this is positive? Uh, well, uh, like the patient should be referred uh, to a prof uh, professional and evaluated for adherence to their medical treatment. So the AHA states that an antidepressant is safe in patients with CD and effective for the treatment of depression. Cognitive therapy is an alternative and exercise is very important. Where does this uh, evidence come from? So there's three like major trial, nothing for PED, but uh, for in terms of acute coronary symptoms or coronary artery disease, uh, two that are randomized, one that is not. And what did we learn from this in terms of the enriched trial, the, the one that wasn't randomized, but basically patient uh, population, over 2,000 patients after myocardial infarction that were positive for depression. They were placed in uh, cognitive uh, behavior therapy for six months, plus or uh, minus SSRI as indicated by uh, the treating physicians. The goal was to see if mortality and uh, recurrent infarction could be reduced by this, the treatment of depression. Primary endpoint was death and recurrent MI, secondary depression, treatment of depression. So there's no change in the event-free survival in that study. Uh, but there was an improvement in the depressive symptoms and the social isolation. For the SAD heart trial, so those were 369 patients after an acute coronary syndrome that were positive for depression. Uh, they were treated with an SSRI or placebo for six months, and the goal was to evaluate the safety and efficacy of sertraline, so the uh, SSRI in those patients, Primary endpoint was a change in EF, and then other uh, secondary were cardiac, uh, cardiac measures. So uh, it was found that sertraline was safe and effective in the treatment of depression. There's no changes in the EF between the two groups. 
uh, but there is no changes or significant changes in uh, the events such as death or other cardiovascular events, likely because the trial was also not powered to look at those. And then in the CREATE trial, published uh, uh, actually from, Mont uh, uh, from Montreal, published in JAMA in 2007, 284 patients with CED and major depression. There's two in uh, interventions looked at, the interpersonal therapy and an SSRI. The goal, again, to determine the safety of an SSRI uh, and psychotherapy uh, reducing depressive symptom patient with CED. Uh, and then the endpoints were like depressive scores. Uh, and this demonstrated the efficacy, so improvement in the depressive scores in the patients treated with uh, the SSRI, but no uh, change with the uh, interpersonal psychotherapy. So overall, like in terms of does antidepressant improve cardiovascular outcomes in our patients, uh, in patients with co acute coronary syndrome, the psychological and pharmacological interventions are safe and reduce anxiety and depression, but there's no evidence to, uh, to support the fact that they would decrease death or cardiovascular events. What about patients with PED? There's a big void of information on this right now. So really the closest, uh, closest evidence we have is from patients with coronary artery disease. So uh, is there something we could do about it? Likely, but right now the evidence is limited. So in summary for the talk, like, uh, as you could see, depression is associated with cardiovascular disease and, uh, and appear to influence outcomes. And now we're talking about um, uh, outcomes that are very important in terms of uh, revascularizations that we're doing, patients with PED. So we should keep a high index of suspicion for this. And it's pretty easy in clinic like to screen with a PHQ2 or just look at the mood of the patient. They, they appear very depressed. Uh, possibly refer them at this point, uh, may help like in terms of their treatment. And um, so need, a lot of research needs to be done in the future uh, for this, and hopefully like uh, we'll get more answers uh, with the, for future studies. Thanks. <laughs>